as I continue to evolve down the crazy spiral of being unmedicated, um, I apparently continue to lose my ability to prepare for this podcast. So today, instead of writing an episode, I went ahead and opened up my journal and grabbed some random entries, and I'm going to grab a topic and just talk. Uh, We'll do that like four to six times. We'll see how long, you know, somewhere between 30 minutes an hour, we'll see how this goes. Uh, This is my podcast. I do what I want. Welcome back to Off the Echo on Air with Bruce Alexander. So I've been off of ADHD medication for about two weeks now, and it's going great. I feel completely different than I've ever felt being off of medication, and that's exciting to me. But there are certain things that are falling through the crack a little bit. I've got a lot of processes that I'd, I'd input and things that I've, I've habit stacked and been able to like really ingrain those things thanks to the medication while I was in them. Preparing for the podcast is one that I had gotten off of because I had done so many pre-recorded episodes that... I wasn't prepping for the podcast regularly. So here I am doing, um, in the middle of doing a challenge for trying to get my body being balanced and business all in alignment. I'm taking a extra course. I'm trying to continue to launch my own personal business and I'm coaching some clients inside of that business. I sound very ADHD at the moment. I'm taking on a lot. So whenever it comes to doing the the preparation for the podcast the way I used to, it's not happening right now. But the good news is, is being off of that medication allows me to be impulsive and for it to actually go well. I am much more relaxed and feel free to be myself because I don't have that voice inside of me from the medication telling me, do it the neurotypical way. I'm not saying that's what medication does for everybody, but for me, that is what the medication was. It allowed me to deaden my emotions enough and to step back and look at things logically to try to do it the neurotypical way. And for a lot of things that worked great, but working at home on a personal, like my own business, my own brand, why was I trying to do everything the neurotypical way? This seems silly. I don't have specific, sorry, I don't have specific hours, so why not stop trying to be so beholden to the clock? And that's worked out mostly well for me, but now I just, I have to wake up earlier because there's more stuff I want to get done. So you want to get more stuff done, you need more time. How do you create more time? You try to stick to a sleep schedule. And it's gone all right. I've actually gone to sleep before 12 30 one o'clock almost every night for the past three weeks and the reason why this has worked for me is because i it's because of something i want it's not to go to sleep early and wake up to a job that i fucking hate like it was for the fire department um you know shout out to all those firefighters out there appreciate what you're doing it was not for me um and then waking up for something that i wasn't passionate about was not for me Waking up for something that that fills my soul and gives me purpose, that excites me to wake up for it. But I'm still not that excited. Like I'm, I'm, you know, I'm waking up because I work from home. I'm able to take my time, meditate first thing in the morning, do some like flexibility stretching stuff, do some like discovery, some uh, some mental improvement, and get a workout in before I ever even start working. That was something that I was never able to do because I had to go. <laughs> go to my job at the butt crack of dawn and then be on somebody else's schedule for the rest of the well for a time for 24 hours and then after that for at least 10 hours every day and by the time you especially as a neurotypical by the time you spend 10 hours on somebody else's schedule doing what they say you need to do basically masking and pretending like this is what you want to be doing you get home and you're fucking exhausted. Like you, you can hardly do the things that you need to do to interact with your family, let alone do anything for yourself to bring you like peace of mind and joy. So anyways, the goal today is to pull up what, um, what is called my stack. This is my digital journal I've been using for the last couple of weeks in which it like allows me to have conversations with my inner voice and, at times, 
I would say pretty confidently that God shows up in these conversations and provides me with some some truly insightful um, takeaways. And I'm just going to pull up some of these random ones and we're going to talk about it a little bit. And just so you know, this is not PG. Um, I, I thought about censoring it to a degree, but that's not what my mind is. That's not what my journal is. Like I'm, I'm sitting here looking at the first one I'm going to pull up and it is, uh, the title of it is Bruce's fat fucking mouth. So if, if that doesn't sound like it's for you, goodbye, like feel free to go. But this is going to be real and honest and I'm not going to censor the, the creative process that has brought me so much enlightenment. So, you know, Take it or leave it. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. For those of you who are listening, that's whenever you open the screen that you're looking at. And on this screen, I've got my journal opened up. It is loading. I hope it's loading. It worked a second ago. What? Okay, we're going to try that again because it didn't take. Oh, we're going to share entire screen. There you go. All right, sweet. Entire screen is up. We're good to go. So the, it's actually titled The King Inside of Me, but it started out being titled as Bruce's Fat Fucking Mouth. So once I worked through the the trigger that I was wanting to work through, which is the trigger was last night I sat down for a little snacky poo of some Lay's barbecue chips, the Sam size, and at the bottom of the bag, I realized that I was a piece of shit. And that is not the most helpful ideology to have, but that's how I felt whenever I, re whenever I reached the bottom of the bag. I eat an entire Sam's. I mean, it, it had been open, so I'll give, I'll give myself a little bit of leniency and say I ate three quarters of a bag of a Sam's size bag of Lay's barbecue chips. That is a shit ton of chips. And I then had it like during that I had a Sprite. And so whenever I stood up, I felt like Santa Claus, but like with injected steel into his bowl of jelly. My stomach felt so solid and bloated. I went, you know, I went to bed and I felt like garbage, didn't sleep well. And so whenever I woke up, I wanted to work through this, this anger I had with myself for my fat fucking mouth, for not being able to just, you know, say no. Uh, not being able to like have some sort of self control, and what's different about this this stacking process is the first thing you have to do is whenever you are coming into a rage stack is whenever something has really triggered you, like it's really pissing you off because in this process we we just accept the fact that anger is God's trigger for you to expand. That is, so you lean all the way into the anger and you accept that you've been given this chance to grow and expand who you are. So in this, I jumped in and I just, I just, it doesn't say all the stuff, but I maybe it does. It says all the positive stuff that I, that I came out of this with, but the trigger was telling me that I'm a fat piece of shit and I have no self-control but i had to do that i had to get all these things like all these thoughts that i have about myself all these these limiting self-beliefs that i have i've ignored them for oh i don't know my entire life and they've always come creeping back up even whenever i was i would say i don't know 30 45 pounds lighter than i am but i was just solid muscle i looked at my mirror i looked in the mirror and thought what a piece of shit like I, I literally could not stand looking at myself. Part of that was because I was just as poorly emotionally and like mentally fit as I am now physically fit. But that, you know, the, the same thing remains is that I had this really negative belief about who I was and how I showed up and being able to pull this out and have this conversation with myself and step away from the story that. I don't have control of what it is that I put in my body. Allow me to unleash the fact that by them. Let's jump in. Wait, it starts here. 
it allowed me to to get this new story. This new story that allowed me to paint for myself is I'm the fucking man that I will lead my kingdom to abundance that I will do whatever it takes for as long as it takes to feel and look like I can, I can and will fuck up anyone who comes for anyone or anything that belongs to my kingdom. I am an active and physical leader who is able to perform the tasks necessary to freely inspire confidence and honor for my queen and my prosperity. My prosperity is my children and the people who are closely connected to me. I fuck on top. That means exactly what you think it means. And you can take it or leave it, but that's not something that's been happening for a while because I've been too fat. And that's that's something that's going to change. So I am a four-dimensional man who owns a powerful yes and a powerful no. I talk to God daily, and when he says move, I fucking move. I make my queen and prosperity feel loved, led, and protected at the deepest possible levels. That is what came from me eating a bag of chips. Like, that story has made me feel more powerful than I have ever felt in my entire life. I, I, I don't know how else to say it. I, this was, I don't know, two hours of writing to get to this point, but the words that I used to describe myself at this point were power, domination, sovereignty, which is the highest level of power, freedom, pumped, geeked, hyped, explosive. This moment of utter disgust with myself birthed this moment that had me feeling power, domination, freedom. How wild is that? And what, what the, the big takeaway for me from this specific story is this starts with truth. It starts with being able to tell yourself the true story, like the real guttural, here's what I'm dealing with story versus saying, no, no, I'm fine. I've been telling myself I've been fine for the last six months and I, my weight has just gotten out of control because I'm not fine. I'm not okay with this. I hate it. And because I was telling myself I was okay with it, I was okay not doing anything about it. And it's easy to say, well, you know, I'm starting a business. I'm doing much better as a father and a husband. I've come so much closer to God. So three things are working pretty well. But whenever you don't have all of your core four working in unison, you are missing out on a massive amount of power. And I think even if you can at least recognize where your weakness is, which mine is in, in the body, that it has already given me so much power to just realize how much it is holding me back. Now that I, you know, if I can continue to make tiny bits of progress each day, I know that I am continuing to lead my my kingdom to the abundance that is set aside for me. And that's uh, that's pretty exciting. So, um, oh, I also, in this, found that this was like really wild to me is that this thing this part of me that I hated, have hated, you know, don't, don't hate me more because I see it as something different, but had this, you know, strong distaste for turned out to be that I uncovered is the key to making me the king I want to be, to making me the leader that is able to actively lead my family, my business, my, you know, my flock, the people who respect and listen to me, that fat fucking mouth that I hate so much is the actual king maker. It is the thing that I need most to be able to speak to that flock, to speak to a movement, to have this podcast. It both feeds my information out and it gives me the nutrition and the rejuvenation I need like through calories. Like, But I've been so focused on hating what it does and focusing on the negative aspect of it, that I literally had zero love for this part of my face and the, and what it represents. Like my fat fucking mouth isn't just my literal mouth. It is the mentality of eating, like just all of eating. I just, I hate how I've done it for so long because I couldn't see that there's something important there. There's something that I needed to face. And it was, I'm worthy 
of the nutrition that will bring me to that next level. There was a huge block of self-worth that I was struggling to get over because I looked at myself in the mirror and said, you don't deserve it. I have to let go of that. I have to let go of that story that I don't deserve it because I've accepted a calling from God. I've said, like, I have said it over and over again. I am called to speak to ADHD parents. And if I've accepted a calling from God, I need to, I need to level myself up continually to be strong enough to carry the burden. I have to stop making excuses and me not being worthy says that God made the wrong choice. God doesn't make the wrong choice. Either you step up and you receive what he gave, what he has for you, or you don't. He chose me. And so I have to show up. I have to step up. And because, unfortunately, I live in America, and people look at, you know, my man boobs and don't want to follow me. They don't want to listen to this guy. Even whenever I was, you know, 310 and I was jacked, so just like total muscle, people still wanted to nitpick me and find reasons to to not find me worthy. I mean, fuck them, but still it's true. I have to I have to first see myself as worthy before anybody else is going to see it. To really really believe it. And if I if, like if I am disrespecting this God-given vessel, then how am I going to be the one that people choose to be the facilitator of their transition? So I have to do better. So that is topic one. That was about 20 minutes, so we'll maybe do one or two more. All right, we'll pull back up the share screen. I would love people to interact with this and tell me, is this stupid? Like, am I dumb for sharing my journal? Like, as I saw the words come up, it was a little cringy. It was like, oh, God, why am I doing this? Um, warrior Core, I don't want to go too much into what Warrior is. It's like my Warrior Training Certification. Um, that I'm not really also being okay. I'm just gonna close my eyes and I'm gonna flip back and forth. And here, okay. So let's start at the top. Wait, we kind of did this already. Stepping back, what have you created uh, from sorry, stepping back from what you have created so far? Why has this gratitude trigger been extremely positive? I have identified that Bruce's fat fucking mouth is the kingmaker. Understanding that, understanding that and coming into alignment with my calling has just unlocked unlimited possibility and has given me the last piece I need to go to the future I have designed. I love it. I'm absolutely, dude, like I'm getting chills reading my own words of this conversation that is my, like my conversation with God. Like I could not have gotten here by myself. I've literally been struggling in this same spot for 10 years. Like I've lost the weight, I've put it back on. I've lost the weight, I put it back on. I've put on muscle, I've lost fat. I've lost fat, I've lost muscle, I've done it all. But the mentality has never changed. I've always hated myself and not thought I was worthy of actually giving myself the life-giving fuel that would transform me into the king that I am supposed to be. This is different. Like it shit's changed. The game will never be the same. It will never be the same. I'm also not the same. Like I feel so different being off of medication. Um, I feel like I've I've maintained enough of the the logic and organization to not be a total mess, but that impulsivity that I I think is good. The you know the sporadic. What is the what is it from Clue? The sporadic. It's sporadic. Whatever that is good. I like to I like to have you know something new, something fresh coming into my mind all the time. So many ideas, so many things I want to do, and I love it. So we're gonna try that again. New new pool, and here on this side. All right, eyes open. Let's start at the top again. So stepping back from what you've discovered, why was this discovery extremely positive? This was not meant to be an angry stack, so I'm struggling to see the positive at the moment. I'm just going to write and be with it for a minute until I get there. It is really frustrating when I have got everything going well. I'm firing on all cylinders, and I reach out to my wife to connect with no expectation and nothing but positive energy, and I am met with a fuck you. Ooh, I think this is 
extremely positive because I'm realizing that the zero expectation game is bullshit. I say that I'm reaching out with zero expectation, and that is a lie. There is no expectation of sexual or even intimate response, but I do have expectations as to what basic human interaction looks or will look like. But even that expectation is pretty unfair because the burden I allow her to carry makes it almost impossible to even connect on a human level at all. Ooh, this is positive because I recognize that I either need to step up and take more of the load off of her shoulders or continue to show up consistently attempting to achieve the same connection and have no expectation at all. Looking at the, how positive the discovery trigger has been, what is the singular lesson about life you're taking from this stack? Lighten the load or expand my capacity. Expand my capacity. That is, expand is my new favorite word. Expand. Whenever you get angry, expand. Whenever you get sad, expand. Whenever you're happy, expand. It is it is the answer that solves every problem and it is the answer that improves every every answer like if you're happy expand happiness is good joy is better fulfillment is even better than that but what if you were triggered to feel grateful for the happiness or the joy you had and you expanded on that and you were able to hold more joy you were able to hold more uh <clears throat> What is the other one I just said? More joy, more happiness, more more fulfillment, more purpose. What if you could expand? And the the what I realized through this process is it's no longer what if. It's when. Like I can literally write the script myself and make these decisions on the spot to say, I will expand. Because everything that has limited me in the past has been me. So everything that will set me free from here on out will be me. That is like, that is where like that understanding being able to like understand that myself and being able to help other people understand that is where the game changes. I help other people be able to see where they're trying to change to. Like I don't change them. I am not the person who is going to save you. I am going to facilitate you saving yourself by being an outside set of eyes, holding space for you and holding up a mirror for you to be able to like have these types of conversations and be able to offer tools and offer strategies for you to work through all the same stuff I'm working through, but that I've got experience working through because I've had almost 40 years of shoveling shit in my life. I've had a lot of bad experiences that I now see as ammunition for like for the weapon that is me. Like all of that was just loading my ammo pack. It was just making me more and more lethal in solving problems in other people's lives. It's pretty amazing. It's pretty exciting to me. So um, just to go back a little bit more initially, that the story I was telling me, like, I'm going to just, I'm going to go all the way in the story that this last uh, reading came from was I was super irritated because I had started writing and my wife came in and she started to change. And I looked at her and I was just like, what's up? And she was overwhelmed and irritated. And she's like, don't look at me. And my feelings were hurt. Like I was just trying, I was just like being a, like a tiny bit flirty, but also just saying good morning. Cause I was in a good mood. And, and she snapped at me and all of the stories, like all the limiting beliefs, all of the things that were existing in my head that I was pretending weren't all came just flushing in me saying like, I'm not trying to get anything out of her. Like it was not true. Like I wanted validation from my wife. It's not like, it's not unfair to want that, but it's un, it's a lie. It is a lie to say I wasn't expecting anything. I was expecting to receive validation from my wife whenever I said good morning. Does it is it a bad thing to expect that? Doesn't matter. What matters is me keeping my side of the street clean and telling the truth. Being real with myself and saying, like, oh, I didn't expect anything. That's a fucking lie. I did expect something. I do expect things. There are things that I expect. And whenever I can like pull it out and step back and look at it and it's like, see, that caught you off guard because you expected it. And then you got butt hurt. 
that's what I want to be able to do is be able to step away from those things and see and see like you're triggered by this because you told yourself that you didn't expect anything. But you didn't expect this one thing, but you still expected something. And so then I'm able to come into the situation next time and actually not have that expectation. Just say good morning, mean it with the, you know, all of the joy and kindness in my heart and just give her that gift. This is something that I've grown up very entrenched in is the giving of gifts with the ex- with the expectancy with the, with the expectation of receiving something in return. Like my father very much that person who's like he gave he you know gave me something 10 years ago and we'll ask where's that thing I gave you? I need it I need it back. Like you gave me like I sold it for crack rocks dad. Back off. But that's the thing that's he thinks that every gift that you give is like a an out an out an exchange in alchemy. It's like I give you something, I need like I will receive something in due time, and I don't ever want to be like that. I want to actually be able to give gifts of kindness, of peace, of transformation, of whatever, and them actually be gifts. And whenever there's transactions, everybody is aware and they're happy to transact with me. The people who you know I call clients who are really um, I don't, I don't know. I need a new name for them because it's like, there's so much more. They are like co-conspirators. They're collaborators. We are on this journey together and I'm just a, like a little farther along in the journey. I have a little bit more knowledge on how to navigate and I'm sharing that with them. And they, they know that they are part of a transactional process and they are happy to pay me on a biweekly basis because I am giving them value. And I'm not tricking them and saying like, oh, no, like this isn't going to be this, but it's going to be this. And then swim baiting and switching them. That's what it is whenever you give a gift and you say later on, where's where's my, you know, where's my whatever? Where's my receipt? Where's my ticket? Where's my where's my exchange for what I gave you? That's that was a little bit of an ADHD moment. That was a little bit of a um, what do you call it? a little bit of a meander? I mean, I think that's what uh, the Obama called a little bit of a meander. <clears throat> so in the rest of this discovery, it asks, in this moment, what discovery has anger and irritation triggers activated in you? I'm still struggling to figure out what anger and irritation triggers I have suppressed, but I know they are there. As I started to started this stack, my wife came into change and I told her that she looked cute and she told me not to watch her change. This definitely triggered the fuck out of me. What story are you telling yourself about this discovery? My wife is the only constant. Ah, so this is the story that was in my mind. My wife is the only constant source of irritation and anger that exists in my life. And that is not a trigger for growth. It makes me feel like shit for just trying to love and connect with her. Describe the single word feelings that arise for you when you tell yourself that story. Stuck. Helpless. Frustrated. Describe the specific thoughts and actions that arise for you when you tell yourself this story. I want to start over with someone else. I want to ultimatum her into therapy. I want to find someone who values me and appreciates my attempts to connect. She is a villain and doesn't contribute anything positive to the story. So stepping back, well, like why is it been extremely positive? And that's what I read earlier, so I'm not going to read that again. I need to lighten my load or expand my capacity. I'm going to apply this lesson to balance. So with my wife, the lesson I learned was lighten the load or expand my capacity. How does this lesson apply to your balanced domain? I cannot continue to expect my queen to juggle a thousand roles and still have the capacity to hold space for me. I must step up at least or in at least one of these areas. See, and th- this is where like why this process is so important is because three paragraphs ago, I was so pissed off. This was her fault. And in my mind, especially if you were ADHD and you have, you know, rejection sensitive dysphoria or you have that, that, uh, that negative dialogue loop going on in your head, you get caught up in telling these stories that make everybody else the villain. Everything is everybody else's fault. But whenever you can pull this stuff out and walk the block and look at what's actually happening, I come to the place where I now look at it and say, I'm not doing my fucking job. I'm not taking care of my wife. I'm not giving her space and room to breathe to where she's able to even think about giving me what I need because she's so busy giving everything to everybody. She has nothing for herself. And those are the kinds of thoughts that save marriages. 
Those are the kinds of thoughts that start processes that repair years and years of damage. And I can't do that. Like most people can't do that for themselves by themselves. They need help. And that is what I do for other people. That's what, what the stack does for me. So anyways, and then you, you, from there, you like figure out more revelation. So what is the most significant revelation or insight that you are leaving the discover stack with? Why do you feel this way? I am still responding like a toddler to conflict in my marriage. I have no resiliency. I take a tiny wound from a caged animal and I'm ready to put it down. I am not accessing my capacity for grace and compassion. I am still extraordinarily self-centered. This is honesty. This is being brutally honest and real with yourself and using it to grow. I will never be the person that I want to be if I rest on my laurels and say I'm already good enough. I have to admit where I'm failing. And this is one of the spaces. I am still self-centered a lot of times. I'm more concerned on working on myself to be able to handle the things than just handling things. And that's something that I'm working on right now is just taking on more, trying to leave less in the tank, trying to be like trying to leave it all in the field every game versus like trying to save it all up for the playoffs, which I'm not going to make it to because I'm getting my ass kicked every game. Like I just have to start leaving it all out in the field. And that's on body balance, being, and business. Like I'm doing it in all those different areas. I have to stop saving some for this quote unquote later. Like I just need to start hitting the bed exhausted. I need to work out harder. I need to love harder. I need to parent harder. I need to just, I need to show up and give everything I've got right now because that's how you're expand. That's how you expand your capacity. That's how you give God to like, that's how you give God the signal that you're ready to accept more. That's where energy comes from that you didn't have before is you give it all to somebody else. And God says, I want to give you some more. But if you're constantly holding it for yourself, that's all you get. You will get no more. You will expand nothing. You get nothing. You lose. That's it. So, and then you, the end of this is you have to tie it to an action because you can do all the talky 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 you want if you're not tying it to action it is not turning into anything so the immediate actions i was committed to leaving the stack was being more compassionate in all of my interactions breathing and thinking before i spin out emotionally so that is another stack um it's been 33 minutes i think i'll do one more like now that i'm just like i'm just in it i'm just doing it i I don't know. I enjoy kind of reading through this stuff. Like this, this is my this is my personal scripture. This is basically re me writing the the gospel according to Bruce, and me like reading back through this stuff and sharing it and studying it is reminding me of the things I need to know. It's like you could read the Bible one time and pick up a lot, yes, but there's still a ton of stuff that you're going to need to continue to read back through to be reminded of these important discoveries, important lessons that have been bestowed upon your heart. These have been bestowed to come from my heart, through my hands, so they feel they're personally for me. I created them, but I created them with God's wisdom. Like, I was just here with these feelings, and God was helping me put out words that made sense. So this one is titled My Biggest Lie. I was stacking my balance, and in this moment, what did this benchmark and the challenge I was doing, like what did it activate in me? That I am not the truth teller I considered myself to be. What is the story you're telling yourself about this discovery? I thought I had come to terms with my lying, which was extensive, but I really only have pro progressed on my conscious lies. The unconscious ones, the internal programming I've come to know is just starting to reveal itself to me. Describe the single word feelings that arise when you tell yourself that story. Disappointment. Frustration. Describe the specific thoughts and actions that arise for you when you tell yourself the story. It pisses me off that I really thought I had made so much progress, but I just scratched the surface. Not that they're not feeling the associated feelings with the truth is like making a promise with your fingers crossed. It doesn't actually mean anything. Ooh, who wrote that? Mm, bars. I'm going to say that again. 
Not feeling the associated feelings with the truth is like making a promise with your fingers crossed. It doesn't actually mean anything. This is me telling all the truth for the last year on my podcast. I've been medicated so heavily that I didn't feel the truth that was was associated with it. I could describe it. I could say like, oh, that makes me sad. Yes, Dave, that is not a very happy feeling. But actually getting into it, like feeling the feelings I'm feeling now, getting back through this stuff, crying as I write, getting angry whenever I uh, I think about the, the wrongs I've done, like feeling guilty and disgusting and dirty. Like, I don't love all of it, but I love the results that are coming. Like, I am growing so much faster because I can actually feel the things I've been like hiding from my entire life. I now have access to the highest of highs because I can feel the lowest of lows. And I'm, and I'm, I'm using that to exp- expand my capacity. Expansion. I can get it bigger. The capacity can be so big if you're willing to feel it at both ends. That's what she said. Okay, so... Stepping back from what you've discovered, why has this discovery been extremely positive? Now I can pull back the curtain and start to access the power I've been missing from the real deep truth. Looking at how positive this this discovery trigger has been, what is the singular lesson about life you are taking from this stack? Keep digging. I am a magician at hiding stuff from even myself. I want it all out in the open, though, so I have to keep digging so I can expose it. I want to apply this to being the lesson I learned was keep digging. I'm a magician at hiding stuff, even myself. I want it all out in the open, so I have to keep digging so I can expose it. And this applies to my being, my relationship with the higher power, with God, is that I have to get my internal and external selves in alignment to access the power that belongs to me. Not the poser that it says, because the poser is who I was. I want the power that belongs to me. And what is the most significant revelation or insight? that you are leaving this discover stack with. Why do you feel that way? I have been a thief. Oh, damn, bars. I have been the thief of my own power. Projecting a false narrative, whether I thought it was true or not, has been draining me of life energy. When you function in alignment, you don't have to feel like you are forcing everything. Bro, so good. I have been the thief of my own power. Projecting a false narrative, whether I thought it was true or not, has been draining me of life energy. When you function in alignment, you don't have to feel like you are forcing everything. (laughs) My entire career as a firefighter was feeling like I was forcing everything because it was a lie. I didn't want to be there. I didn't want to do it. I wanted to help people. So I said, this is what I want to do. I wanted to help people how I helped them now. I didn't want to run into burning buildings. That shit sucked. I didn't want to carry uh, people from, you know, in the middle of the night with piss-soaked sheets. Like, that stuff was not fun. It's a job. It was a career that paid and that, like, changed my financial status forever. But it broke me mentally because I thought that that's who I was. Anyways, immediate actions committed to taking, leaving the stack. Keep digging to uncover my internal truths and share them openly, externally. Bro, that's what I'm doing right now. I did not plan this whenever I wrote that, but I am sharing them openly, externally, right at this moment, and it is beautiful. I absolutely love this. I might just do this for my non-guest-centered podcast. I've got three guests lined up for the next few episodes, so there will be guests. But if you guys have listened to this, and this is something that you like, you need to comment. You need to let me know that this is that this feels as good as it feels to me because I think I'm going to do it more. But also, if you think it's dumb, if this does, if you didn't get anything from this, like if me like bearing this, you know, very personal information did not help you, let me know. That's fine. Like I may or may not listen, but I, it would be important to know. It'd be nice to know. Uh, get in the comments and engage with this stuff and let me know if I am providing you with value. That's all I want to do. I want to help people. And if you are wanting to uncover the the lies you've been telling yourself, 
if you want to stop projecting a false narrative, if you want to stop being the thief of your own power, then you go take the uh, aim, the ADHD aimless life assessment at www.authenticidentitymanagement.com forward slash assessment. And it will give you your aimless life score. And from there will lead you to some free resources or a consultation with me totally free where I will give you some helpful strategies to start living your life on purpose. I absolutely am here to help. I am Coach Bruce. I am a life coach for ADHD parents. If you're not an ADHD parent, I don't know if I can help you. I, I try to, you know, I, I, my ADHD parents that I've helped, bro, we have such a strong connection and there's been such great work done. I tried to take the same process to my neighbor because he's struggling right now and he is not a parent. He is not married. And bro, I have never felt so helpless leaving that meeting. I, I usually I feel just full of energy. I feel on fire after leaving a coaching meeting. I felt like I wanted to get in the fire because he wasn't my, he wasn't my person. Like he wasn't my target audience. So if you're not an ADHD parent, then just move the fuck on. Like, apparently that is not what I'm supposed to do. Like, if you don't know if you're ADHD, but you are a parent, if you listen to this and it has struck you as true, that's who we need to talk. That is who I'm supposed to be connecting with. Not these single people out here who have no kids. You, you, you don't understand. Like, we are not, we're not the same. You know, you saying, well, like, I've got my dog and I've had her for this. is not a fucking child, my friend. It is not the same. Well, my girlfriend three years ago, I don't fucking care. If you're not married to her, you do not understand. If you're not divorced from her, if you haven't been through the shit with the person, if they haven't seen you shit with the door open, I'm sorry. You are not on the level you need to be at for us to have a conversation. Theme. That's it. That is that is the show for today. Make sure to go check out the Aimless Life assessment is in the com or in the description. And I'll be back next week with another episode. Uh, next week will either be Bales Chapel, who is the, uh, she works for the Suicide Prevention Hotline. She is, she is ADHD and autistic, and she is real as fuck. Like, I'm super excited to have her on the show. She is going to be really awesome. And then on the next episode, I've got Dr. Alondra Rogers, I believe is her name. And she is a, a autistic and ADHD social worker who her and I talked pretty in depth about how hard it was for her to get her diagnosis as autistic. And it was a really interesting story. Uh, she also has a nonverbal autistic daughter. There is, she has got some really interesting information to share. She's got access to a ton of, they both have access to a ton of resources um, I think that this is going to be a really great growth period for the new direction of the show, showing up of your, as yourself and, you know, being very centered and rooted in neurodiversity. We're like, that's where that's our anchor now, neurodiversity and authenticity. We're not we're not leaving from there. If it ain't about that, if you ain't an ADHD parent, if you're an autistic parent, get out of my space. You're not for me. I'm not for you. This is this is what we're about from here on out. So. All right, everybody, have a great night. I will talk to you next week. Be yourself and love yourself. Peace. And the music goes now. I made this, by the way. Drop a beat. Wait. Right. By the way, why is it not playing? I did something wrong. That makes it so silly. Oh, I had to stop sharing. All right, stop sharing the screen. Silly boy. And now, episode over. more fun. I think the new podcast version is much better. We're gonna we're gonna have a great time from here on out, guys. To the moon. Let's go. I'll see y'all next week. Bye everybody.